my love different reads are from a life worth reading tag to me in the january tag i think it's called it's a bookish tag that helps you reflect on the past year and also in the coming year about books about your reading i'm not going to answer every single one of these questions i'm just going to choose some of them and answer them honestly okay so starting off with my 2022 bookish goals the first one is to read 70 books obviously i can read more books or less books it's fine this is just a number the next one is to read all the books that i bought in 2021 so here i have all the books that i hold in 2021 i always try to prioritize the books that were gifted to me then the next one is to read my 22 books for 2022 i actually made a video talking about all the books the problem that i have with making these books is that my reading taste is always changing i feel like or my reading mood so it's a little bit difficult to choose 22 books to read during an entire year but the books i chose in this list are books that have been on my mind for a long time so hopefully when i get around to reading them i still will want to read them the next one is to read my 2022 releases i have a master list of books that are coming out in 2022 that i think i'm interested in reading i just want to be up to date with the new releases obviously i don't have to force myself to read the book when it comes out if i'm not in the mood to read it but i do want to try to prioritize reading more new releases because that's something that i don't really tend to do then this one is going to be an interesting project and it's to continue or dnf my book series i have this master list on my notion page of the authors and series that i started reading and also the ones that i want to start reading so my goal this year is to try to continue reading this series that i have already started and if by the end of the year i feel like i don't really want to continue the series or if i haven't picked up any more books of that series i just going to dnf the series and not continue it because sometimes i feel like i force myself to finish series like i don't like abandoning series i don't know why for some reason if i started reading it I just feel like I, I commit to it and I want to continue reading it and then I'm going to kind of do the same with the series that I want to start. There's some series that have been on my TBR for such a long time that I haven't gotten around to. Now as you can see here, I have a list of the authors and series that I'm currently reading and then I have one for the authors and series that I want to start reading. So looking at this list, I already know there are some series that I, I do not want to continue reading. Like for example, the Shadow Me series, I am pretty sure I'm not going to continue reading those books. The Hara Mafia is coming out with a new book book in 2021 so maybe i will start reading that series and i'm on the edges i'm going to finish all the calories of books i'm obviously going to continue reading with sarah j mas i am going to finish the Akuchar series i do not think i want to continue with the throne of glass honestly crown of midnight was very boring l kennedy i do not think i'm going to continue reading more of her books they're not like super bad books but i tend to give her books like two or three stars so yes these are the series that i'm currently in the middle of or authors that i've read some series and i want to start reading other series and then down here i have the ones that i want to start reading these are authors that i've never read anything from or series that i want to start for example with v Schwab, i've read the invisible life of adi la rue la rue i always say la rue la rue I don't know. Then the next one is to read the Goodreads Choice Awards winners of 2022. I did a video reading all the winners of 2021 and that really made me want to read the winners of 2022 as well. I don't know if I'm going to make a video of me reading all the books again, but even if I don't make a video, I still want to read the winners. Oh, okay. And then I have two goals that I'm going to talk about them at the same time. The first one is to do the books around the world challenge. And the next one is to track my reading. I know there's many challenges of reading books around the world, but I just decided to do my own this is the page i created to track my statistics for 2021 you know it's okay it's fine it worked for the time being but this year i decided to do a google spreadsheet so this is how i'm tracking my reading this year as you can see on top i have different colors so i can divide them between the different categories and then down here i have my graphics and charts and as you can see here at the top i have the title of the different categories i'm going to do a video talking in depth and showing every single thing yeah if you're interested in that it is coming okay here is where the book around the world challenge is here for example as you can see the book location currently i haven't read any books located in south america or oceania i've only read one book located in asia so 
yes, when I look at this, I know that I need to read more books from South America, Asia, Oceania, and you know, just try to read books from different countries. I like having this visual because here I can clearly see the countries where, where I haven't read books from. Then here I have my book location region. I also like adding the region because you know, Southern Europe and Eastern Europe are not similar as well as North America and South America or Central America or even the Caribbean islands. So as you can see here, I've divided all the regions in my own way. Like for example, I have Polynesia, Melanesia, Micronesia, also the Caribbean islands. Obviously, I feel like everyone divides things differently, but this is the way I did it. And then on my Notion page, I did a books around the world page with all the regions and the countries within the region. So I could just go back here and see where I decided to put the country. Going back here, I also have the author's nationality. As you can see, pretty much all of them are from the US. Some of them are from Spain. One of them is from Nigeria, the other one is Australian. But yes, the book location may be a little bit more spread out, but the author's nationality, it's not. And then here I just have the author's continent. This circle is going to become more bigger and bigger as I keep adding the author's continent. And yes, this is just the other's author's information. Like I said, I'm going to make a video talking about how I'm tracking my reading this year and then here I have the co-pile rating system created by Jeep from Book Roast. I forgot to mention this but this spreadsheet is from Jeep and I just reorganized everything, changed some colors and just some categories and then from the graphics and charts I pretty much changed everything and I just reorganized things to fit my reading. So yes this is how I'm tracking my reading this year and this is how I'm doing my books around the world challenge. But instead of three, I'm going to show four because I don't know, I just I need to show four of them. The first one is a mythology book and it's Kaike by Vaishnavi Patel. This is an adult historical fiction fantasy and mythology book. And then I'm pretty sure this is also Indian mythology. Then the next one is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Last year I started reading her books and even though I didn't completely love Thoughts of Jen and Shadow, I absolutely adored Mexican Gothic. And I feel like this book is going to to resemble Mexican Gothic a little bit more due to the horror and Gothic atmosphere and also all her covers are absolutely stunning. Then the next one is Galant by V. Schwab. I've only read one other book by V. Schwab which was The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue. I didn't absolutely love that book but it was because of the plot and because the story ended up being a little bit too focused on the romance element of it. I did fall in love with her writing style and how she builds a story and how she builds a character. This book is going to be a gothic horror fantasy paranormal book. And then the last book I'm going to talk about, Air of Alaska Sanders by Joel Dicker. This is going to be the third book in the Marcus Goldman series. And this is going to be my fifth book I think that I've read by him. All the other books that I've read by Joel Dicker I would recommend to people that like mystery thrillers. Whenever I read his books I always feel like they are too long for no reason. I love long books so I do not mind reading them but he loves doing a lot of foreshadowing. I mean like three or four different timelines having so many characters that you get lost into the story but then whenever I finish one of his books I'm glad that it's a long book. I know it makes no sense, but hear me out. His books are a journey. You just have to start reading his books and trust the process. I think this book is going to be set between his other two Marcus Goldman books. I also don't know when it's coming out in Spanish, so maybe it will be next year. Who knows? They are reading habits that I want to change. The first one is that I want to annotate more books. I've always annotated books one way or another. I do want to make an entire video on how I annotate my books because I think it can be kind of fun to show the inside of my mind when it comes to annotating. The next one is one that I've already started implementing into my life and it's to DNF books. But so far this year, I've already DNF'd two books. And I know that you may be thinking, oh, that's sad. Are you having a bad reading month? I'm not. I'm actually having a very good reading month. I haven't had this much of a good reading month in a long time. And I think it's because I DNF'd books, books that I wasn't really in the mood for, books that I was reading I knew 
I wasn't going to like at all. For me, DNF in books, it doesn't always mean that I'm not going to go back to them. Some of them I DNF and I know I'm not going to go back to reading them, but then some others I DNF because I'm not really in the mood at that time. Because you know, sometimes you may find a book that is like the perfect book for you, but it's not the right situation. But I would rather DNF that book and then go back to it at another time. And then the last habit is something that is helping me so much so far with my reading year, and it's to focus more on adult books and genres you enjoy. During the summer of last year, I really came into the conclusion that I'm very quickly growing out of YA books. When I was doing my statistics for my reading year, I realized that I tend to give YA books, especially fantasy YA books, between two and three stars. Like I never gave them four or five stars. I love reading fantasy books and most of them are YA fantasy. I'm obviously not going to start reading YA fantasy books because I feel like that has been part of my life for such a long time but I do have to realize that the books I tend to enjoy more are adult books so yes I'm just going to try to focus more on the adult books and less on the YA book there's a lot of series that I wish I had read when I was younger but I didn't know the existence of those series so I just have to accept that I'm probably never going to read some of the series that I want to read that are YA fantasy and then for the genres I feel like I know what genre I enjoy and which I don't enjoy so much so just you know keep that in mind and yes I am I do not know if it's going to come out this year but I know it's going to start filming this year so maybe it will come out next year and it's the adaptation of the book Sida by Maria Dueñas Sida is the sequel to The Time in Between by Maria Dueñas The Time in Between is my favorite book so far of this year this year I rewatched the entire series with my mom and honestly it's a good I love the story I'm really excited to see how they're going to adapt this book into a mini series because there are some very iconic places this there's three of them. The first one is The Greatest Battles in History. But I'm not really going to talk about that book because I know for a fact I'm not going to continue in that book until the end of spring, the beginning of summertime. That's the type of book that I like to read when I'm on vacation or when I have free time because it's a more dense book and with non-fiction history books, whenever I read about a certain topic, I then like to research the topic and kind of study some things. So yes, I need my time with that book. The next one is a Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. I was doing a vlog for the Infernal Devices, that's why it was taking me so long to read it because whenever I wanted to read it, I also needed to vlog and I didn't have time to vlog. But sadly, I'm not adoring this book as much as I thought I would. I am liking it, but I'm just not, you know, falling in love with this book. And this goes back to the thing that I said that I'm not really enjoying YA books anymore. I am liking this story much more than the Mortal Instruments story. I think it has to do with the Victorian historical fiction setting as well. And then the last book is Romantic Outlaws by Charlotte Gordon. So far, I'm really enjoying it. The flaws that I have with this book are not with the book itself, but with the characters of the book. This is a non-fiction book which focuses on Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley, like the two different lives. Whenever I do my wrap up, I'm just going to talk about all the characters and all the feelings that I have towards these characters. So far, this is a five-star book. If you like biographies, I would 100% recommend this book because I think it's very well written. And also all the research that went into this book, all the letters, all the quotations, the citations, all the images, all the information that has been researched for this book, I truly think it's top tier and the author did a really good job. <laughs> 